so I've been waiting all day for this. Seriously, it was really hot this morning, just too hot to even work outside here. So I have a number of aloes that I'm going to repot and talk to you about. Way back when, maybe a year or two ago, I did a whole aloe care guide and it was fairly comprehensive. So if you wanna see the aloe care guide, I'll link to that video here. But I have a few aloes, um, two of which need to be potted up. And this is a really lovely genus. I have to say, aloes have really grown on me in a good way. I've learned a lot about them over the years. And it's so funny because I, I got this one at the Ithaca Farmer's Market. It's so beautiful. I, I tend to love the aloes that have this mosaic pattern. You could really see the mosaic pattern here in this aloe variegata. This is a large one that we got at a nursery that recently retired and closed down. But you could see one of the beauties of aloes is that it is a perennial, so it will constantly come back up and shoot out a flower. The flower will die back, but the aloe won't die back, much unlike uh, the agave, which the aloe looks very much alike. But they shoot up all these little babies, and you could actually remove these pups, or you could actually keep them on the plant. And, you know, I have to say everything is so beautiful about the aloe. The structure, the form, the, the way that it propagates, this mosaic pattern, which is seen on many different types of aloes. The flower, the inflorescent stalk that comes up is, is absolutely gorgeous. So there's much to adore and like about aloes. But when they start out, especially here you could see, this is an aloe zebrina. And they start out kind of like this open book or like this fan shape. And then they start to unwind and become more of a rosette shape, which is so neat. So when I bought this aloe, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just mess up this name, Brondrariensis, which I learned is the place where this aloe is from, it looked like a mustache. And that's part of the reason why I bought it. Not only because the coloration was great, but it literally looked like a mustache and I had held it up to my face and it looked like one of those funny curly Q mustaches. But you could see now that since it's maturing, it's starting to unfurl and not look like a fan anymore. It's turning into that rosette. Now the other aloe that I have here is aloe hemingii. And I absolutely love this aloe. And I have to say, I'm so glad it didn't depart on me and go to plant heaven. I learned that this plant does not like to be up against a very cold windowsill in the winter months. And uh, this was actually looking a lot better, but it had a lot of die off down below. But luckily this part of the plant is, uh, is healthy. So I'm gonna get this back up and running and just basically do these aloes some justice because this one's probably outgrowing its pot and this one just needs some new life. So I have this pot here. This is just like, I mean, look at this. This is so ridiculous. This is how much I, I try to save uh, pots. This is a, a duct tape job here. <laughs> it must have cracked in a few different places, but didn't totally crack all the way through. But I am gonna use this pot for this guy. At least that's my initial plan. And I already pre-made some succulent mix here. And I have to say, I, I, I really like sharp drainage for my aloes. And what I mean by that is you could have a potting medium substrate, but with lots of, you know, maybe shale particles or lava stones or perlite or anything along those lines. I actually am so glad that Espoma is doing a bonsai mixture. So I'll show you what that looks like. They didn't have this in their lineup before. This is precisely what I like to use when it comes to planting up aloe. So I'll show you what that looks like. So you see it's got some nice shale and fir bark mix. It's very nice and it's, it's actually incredibly lightweight. So, and I think it looks really good too. So it, it matches nicely. So I, essentially, I'm gonna take some of that and drop that in here. And you could use a cactus and succulent mix. Um, I find that if it has too much peat in it, 
because I'm not watering my cacti and succulents, especially my aloes, a lot, the peat has a tendency to kind of dry up and then the water kind of, kind of beads up on it. So I, I tend to like much more of this bonsai style mixture with some perlite. You could add some charcoal if you want. That's why I brought it out here. But this is pretty much a, a good mix. I'm gonna have to make more along the way because I don't have a big bowl here, but you can see what that looks like. And you know, everybody has their own mix, so do what works for you. So I'm gonna start with this guy. And you know what, I'm gonna add, I'm just gonna add a little fertilizer to this water already. And I'm gonna add some of this water to this already so that it has some texture already when I'm working with it. So when I mix it together, it actually holds together a bit, a little bit like baking. The reason for that is um, these roots on this plant are a little dry. You see that? So we're gonna try to give some life to them. So I'm just gonna start taking this and just put a little bit of this on the bottom. It's a nice mixture. This is a really nice mixture. Let's see where this fits. Yeah, that's nice. And again, this is a beautiful aloe. You can see that this one's more mature because it has that rosette shape. This is a nice little planter that I got from an artisan. I believe she's out of Israel. She also made the planters that my ZZ plants are in, which I absolutely adore, my black ZZs. The only challenge with this planter is that it has a very shallow base. See this? The saucer is really shallow. So if you water, the water has a tendency to go all over the place. So you just have to be mindful. I just will take this over to the sink, water it, and let it dry out over there unless you want to replace the saucer. But it's really, it's like an art piece. And I like that planters are like an art piece. Let me move this away now so it doesn't roll. Nice thing about this is um, I am going to water it in, but because the soil already has some water to it and some fertilizer, it is much easier to work with and kind of locks the plant in. So I'm gonna apply pressure a little bit here. There we go. And watch all water, but water will come right out. Yep. See that? But that at least gives some more oxygen to the roots and really settles the plant into, you know, with the soil. So I'm gonna let that dry out here on the side. And now I'm gonna work with this guy. So, what I'm gonna do is see if I could get some soil. Just pour a little bit like this in here. Easier to use my hands. So again, using the bonsai mixture. Love, love, love that they came up with this. Doesn't mean that it's just for bonsai. I've actually even used it in outdoor gardening <laughs> where I'm planting like some succulents. And I actually have a bag of perlite as well, but this succulent mix already has some nice perlite in it. Again, I'm gonna put some water in here. Settle that substrate in. Just mix it up. Okay, so yes, this aloe has been sitting in this glass. Let me just see. Woo! Look at that shape. So what I'm gonna do is um, just massage these roots. Looks like it was pretty happy in there. So I picked this up actually from uh, Kingbird Farms. Karma grew this and we actually did a tour of her greenhouse as well. So I'll link to that. She is so wonderful and she has such a charming little greenhouse and she does so many interesting succulents and passiflora. Passiflora is one of her real passions. These are great roots, right? Look at these roots. See how different they looked from the, the dry roots of the hemingii right here? And now, if you see some of this, these 
kind of dead leaves below aloe. That's actually fairly common. Aloes usually keep a lot of their dead leaves. It may not be something that is aesthetically pleasing for you, and if not, then you could actually cut them off because these leaves aren't coming back. But a lot of aloes will keep their dead leaves and they're actually quite prickly, so it's a way to protect the stem from herbivores. So it does serve a purpose in the wild. Now I am going to be reusing so much of this um, potting medium that it was already in and that's okay too. It seemed pretty happy with that potting medium and it looks like it was a mixture of peat and perlite. Okay, and I'm just gonna do this. In fact, I'm gonna take some of this out because I didn't realize how long the roots are. They're really crushed in this short pot, so this will give it some ability to move deeper into a taller pot. So this is a, a good sized pot for this is what I'm saying. And again, you don't have to worry about overwatering your aloes if you give them really sharp drainage. That's one thing that I've learned over the years is, you know, some folks really worry about overwatering their plants, but if you give them sharp drainage, if you are mindful that if you're using a peat-based product, that if you're not watering as frequently, uh, that the water may actually beat up. Those are the issues I think that you might come in contact with but for the most part, you can't go wrong. Yeah, this looks really nice. I'm gonna transfer over to this spoon just to go around the edges. And there are many different aloes from all around the world. Some of them come from more desert environments, which we can imagine, but then there's others that are slightly more, I would say, I wouldn't say tropical, but um, they can't handle the cold. Most aloes could handle maybe a light frost but like I said before, this one was on a southern facing window that's very drafty. And it definitely didn't like that. Not this one, the Hemingii. Sorry, I got that confused. So you just have to be mindful and do a little research on the aloe that you're growing because you could find a bit more of its uh, natural history and try to intuit more of what it needs. All right, so that looks, that looks great. You know, this may actually be something that we'll take down in the meadow house. I mean, I really, I'm looking at this planter pot. I really like the planter pot and I love the coloration here of this plant. And I, you know, similar to this, I started collecting a lot of mosaic aloes. So that's what these are more known as with the kind of mosaic pattern. And it's interesting, I don't know why this pattern exists, but I'd imagine it's to detract herbivores or to be more like camouflage. So sometimes when you see this kind of stippling or spots on a plant, it could, maybe signal to insects that, hey, you know, I, I've been um, attacked by another insect, I'm not healthy, or these are uh, mining insect or eggs or anything along those lines. So it could be something that actually protects the plant based on its uh, coloration or allows it to kind of become camouflaged within the habitat as well so it doesn't attract any herbivores. So there's a lot of adaptations that are happening within this group. Water these in. Again, this has already been, a fertilizer has been added, so it's the summer months. Fertilizing once a month would actually be perfectly wonderful for these plants. I'm actually even gonna water my aloe variegata in and all its babies, and also this aloe zebrina. And there you go, some more plant chores done and a little bit of information about aloes. Again, I have a very comprehensive guide on aloe care and uh, growth. So if you wanna see that video, I'll link to it here and then I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys. Stay tuned on Plant One On Me for more botanical tours, talks, and how to's. And if you're looking to further your knowledge on the plant kingdom, then have a look at our various online courses from Troubleshoot Your House Plants to the House Plant Masterclass. Additionally, we have a second channel we started last year called Flock Finger Lakes, where we cover more on outdoor gardening, habitat restoration, agroforestry, and even more. So check that out if that interests you. Otherwise, we'll see you in the next episode.